How could he? How dare he? He was one of them, privileged, the heir to a fortune. 21-year-old Jamie Johnson never had to work a day in his life. Then he went into the movie business, made a candid documentary about his fabulously wealthy That's friends. Great. They spilled the beans, all the beans. The and beans. thus broke the last great- The beans were spilled. That's right, the beans were spilled. Great social taboo. Never, ever, ever be crass enough to talk about money. Well, you could hear the smart set choking on their silver spoons. They cut young Jamie dead. You'll see why in this preview of his sneaky expose, the film he called Born Rich. I always expected that my 21st birthday party would be the greatest night of my life. Champagne, pretty girls, you wonder, can life get any better than this? Well, to be blunt, it can. At midnight, I'm going to inherit more money than most people could earn or spend in a lifetime. CHJB Hub. Jamie Johnson is C It's kind of on the nose to do like a Roaring Twenties, a uh, Great Gatsby type party when we're also currently in the Roaring Twenties where our wealth and income inequality has gotten to a level that is worse than the original Roaring Twenties. Like, we are now living in the Gilded Age uh, era again, and it only took 100 years to get back to it. You know what I'm saying? Which is wild to think about. Serious. He's about to become seriously rich. His share of the Johnson & Johnson Company, founded by his family more than a century ago, is worth millions and millions of dollars. Every time you I guess this is old though. This is like from early 2000, right? By a band-aid, Jamie gets richer. What did I do to earn the kind of money I'll own at midnight tonight? All I did. Somebody remind him he's a millionaire too. Yeah, dude, my situation is exactly the same as like uh, intergenerational wealth recipients. Um, there is no way to fucking analyze. Uh, I'm an idiot. I just see a number and I go, wow, that's really fucking, these are exactly the same. You know, thank you for reminding me, by the way, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Was inherited. <laughs> Hassan, stop accepting Twitch Primes. What? Why the fuck would I do that? Fuck no, bitch. Suck Tyler my cock. I. I want you to go to work tomorrow and be like, listen, boss, man. Guess what? You know, I'm, I'm going to work for free today, okay? Boss, man, I'm coming to work and I'm doing it. I'm fucking working for free today, boss, man, okay? I'm going to live by my principles. Jamie Johnson's immense wealth bothers him. Bothers him so much that he dared question it. And he did it in the most public way. He turned a camera on some of his super rich friends, the wealthiest kids on earth, and made a documentary called Born Rich. Good, good, good. <laughs> Sir. It would be a low estimate, a very low estimate for me to say 20 billion. I remember when I was a little kid, my my mom let me spend the day with my uncle. And uh, he took me to Grand Central Station and he said, this is yours. We are on the 68th floor. Not a bad view to wake up to. <laughs> I think I made a lot of people nervous and anxious. And, oh uh, shit! <laughs> you know, that's the way they felt about it. You had some, some nasty public encounters. I had a few. I would be approached at parties and people would say, what do you think you're doing? Why did you do this? I think you did the wrong thing. And there was some tension there. And I think some people feel like I did break an unspoken rule that shouldn't have been broken. Before I say anything, I, I just want to say that I am really, really reluctant to do this. 
and I really don't like talking to this thing at all, and I dislike you both immensely as a result of the fact. Luke Wheel was one of Jamie's friends. As heir to a massive gaming fortune, Luke would later regret revealing just how much power and privilege comes from being absolutely stinking rich. So whoever pisses you off, and I'm up at boarding school. Bro, every single one of these motherfuckers are just like, they're doing weird sex parties now. They're all like in their 40s and they're, you know, they're telling Congress, per, uh, Congress people to like, you know, legislate a certain way. Every single one of these motherfuckers, unless they're dead from, I don't know, overdosing on whatever the fuck. This kid's from like some shit town in Connecticut. You know, I don't know. I can just say, fuck you. I'm from New York. I can buy your family. Piss off. And this is petty and this is weak and this is very underhanded, but it's so easy, you know? So in a sense, you were a traitor. You burst the bubble. <laughs> You blew the whistle. I, I mean, I, I guess in that sense I was, you know. I mean, people have said that about me, so. Hey, good to see you, dude. Nice. And the German bear. Is that Keanu Reeves? What the hey, fuck? It's oh, never mind. Dude, that's moist critical. What the fuck? My Joan Maria Royo Alcon I just tuned in and I thought it was satire. No, someone found the full doc. We we have to watch this. This is like the best thing. This guy is by Jamie Johnson, who's the heir to the Johnson uh Johnson uh Johnson Jensen Jensen Pharmaceutical Fortune. Captures the rituals, worries, and social customs of the current, a documentary on the children of the insanely rich, directed by one of their own. This 80-minute documentary focused on the growing wealth gap in America is seen through the eyes of filmmaker Jamie Johnson, a 27-year-old heir. What has happened to this guy? I want to know what Jamie Johnson's up to before we continue, because, like, this is an old doc, right? It's from early... It's from, like, the 2000s. American filmmaker, socialite, great-grandson uh, great of Robert John... <sighs> Brain rot setting in. He's, like, disowned. The 1% on various perspectives, past practices, and the issues of the wealthy. He wrote an article titled The 1% for the Huffington Post in 2008. In 2014, he wrote for the New York Times about a White House summit for 100 young philanthropists and heirs of the billionaire family fortunes where he was an invitee. Wait, so he's like kind of out. He's been literally fucking out, huh? By the way, j, &J is the company that spent a century covering up the fact that their talc powder is carcinogenic and has been the cause of many people getting cancer. Dude. If you want to fucking know how uh, the billionaire families are fucking devastatingly evil, watch Dope Sick, okay? I've talked about the Sackler family routinely on this broadcast. You already know. Uh, I've talked about the Sacklers a lot on this uh, broadcast. And uh, Dope Sick does a pretty decent job of, like, fucking, you know, opening up the curtain and also showing uh, how they operated. And it's well acted, too. Uh, it's not a documentary. It's Michael Keaton that like recreated it. Or it's like, yeah, it's like Dark Waters, the Mark Ruffalo movie. Exactly. Very similar. And same vibes. Because the problems are the, still the same. The problems still persist. Born Rich, where are they now? 15 years after the 11 uber wealthy heirs appeared in the controversial documentary, Born Rich, here's where they are from the White House to the Amazon. Georgina Bloomberg. Daughter of former New York City mayor is heir to the, one of the biggest fortunes. Part of the reason she made headlines when she declared at 19 that having the last name Bloomberg sucks in Born Rich. In the years since the documentary, Bloomberg has established herself as a topic question in philanthropist with a passion for animal rights. She's come home. She's come around to be more accepting of her family name, telling town and country. It's a last name now I'm proud of. At 19, I wasn't. Stephanie Erklentz. Spoilers. Shut the fuck up, you stupid fucking bitches. It's real life. We're not spoiling IRL shit. Suck my fucking cock. She's like, at 19, I hated the, the word Bloomberg, which is synonymous with stop and frisk. But now that I'm older, I fucking love it. And, uh, you know, Bloomberg, my dad, Michael, didn't go far enough. Stephanie Erklent in the documentary Finance Era. Stephanie Erklent says she never dated outside of her social background. Since she married the powerhouse investor Chase Coleman the third. Motherfucker has a third. Coleman is worth $2.2 billion. The heiress and her husband are no, both private people, town and country reported, and have kept a low profile in the press for years. 
Christina Floyd, um, the daughter of famous golfer Raymond Floyd. Wait, what the fuck? Why is famous golfer Raymond Floyd so rich? Is it because he's like, he's not mega wealthy. I assume he's like in that crowd though, because like he does something that rich people like. Is that why? You know what I mean? Floyd remained close friends with a fellow born rich Ivanka Trump over the years, putting her art history degree to good use. She worked at Sotheby's where she met art dealer Emmanuel Di Donna before leaving her run for her own firm called Floyd Temporary. Cody Franchetti, Italian baron and textiles heir, Cody Franchetti made some pretty over the top statements over the course of his bone rich interviews. He said he tried to channel his newfound fame into a career in show business before changing his mind and becoming a self described recluse in Manhattan. He's published a number of academic articles on history, history, philosophy, and literature. Earned his Master's in Modern European Studies from Columbia University. Wait, what the fuck? An everlasting... In <clears throat> I think this is the coolest thing you can do as like a billionaire heir. Okay? Straight up. You just like, you just literally dedicate your entire life to academia. Cause like all this other shit when you're like, oh, I'm a philanthropist and uh, I do everything. I, I am literally on top of, he's a baron too. Look at the view count on those papers. 265 views. Yeah. Destruction or persistence. Wait, destruction or persistence. New perspectives on the relationship between feudalism and capitalism. What? A reconsideration of Werner Sombart's luxury and capitalism. Wait a minute. The Giants of Doubt, a comparison between epistemological aspects of Descartes and Pascal. Saving history, monograph, and process. This essay is a short but impacting observation on the economy of the Middle Ages in light of recent economic historians' discoveries. Not only are some conventional beliefs, such as the absence of financial trading economy in the period, discredited, but a more nuanced view of feudalism also emerges from such revelations. The new groundbreaking work of Michael McCormick is pitted against Henry Perrin's classic theory. In addition, seminal works by Mark Bloch, S.R. Epstein, and lesser-known work by Aaron Gurevich provide a more authentic view of the Middle Age economy. Finally, contrary to Marxist histiar historiography, oh, he's not Marxist, uh, this essay postulates that to some extent feudalism fom fomented the development of capitalism. Okay, let's go to the fucking conclusion in this brief survey we've seen that the fancy we've seen that the fancy that trade that and money destroyed feudalism is quite untenable in its simplest form mccormick's groundbreaking discoveries and the more nuanced descriptions of feudalism offered by block and gurevich have shown quite conclusively that at a certain point feudalism fomented capitalism or at the very least was its precursor wait in a weird way yeah, I mean, dude, I mean, this is actually, I mean, this is uh, uh, quite lefty, I think. He's not saying feudalism is good, dude. What the fuck are you talking about? No, I, wait, is he, is he pro-capitalism and also pro-feudalism as a consequence of that? Wait, this is like, this is not anti-Marxist at all. What the fuck? This is Marxist. So why did he say, uh, contrary to, isn't he just saying what basic knowledge from my high school government class? No, I don't think he's saying. Okay, I'm not going to fucking read it. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing. That's boring as fuck to do on stream. Um, and in general. <sighs> the true disintegrating force of feudalism was political centralization. We thus ought to look at feudalism's passing from a broader perspective, a deep structural societal mutation which of course was also due to economic changes, but what concerns us here is the degree to which the economic aspects during the transition from a feudal to a capitalist economy are in conflict. Surely at a certain point of economic expansion, feudal strictures uh, were the emerging capitalist economy. War the emerging because eventually capitalism operated on a scale that necessitated a system that was not fragmented. This paper, though, has attempted to show that feudalism's demise was not due to slowly, not due to supposedly new financial conditions, many of which were already in place. Um... It's actually, no, this is not, this is not, uh, pro-capitalist at all. Anyway. 
uh, uh, if anything, feudalism might have contributed to the rise of capitalism since we've seen, uh, we have seen that in effect trade and commerce had already existed, but capitalism emerged in different parts of Europe during the feudal age. Okay, I want to see this one too. I want to see the luxury one. Ah, I'm not going to do it. Never mind. That's too boring. Okay. Juliet Hartford, back in 2003, A&P heir Juliet Hartford told the Observer she might have opted to skip appearing Born Rich as she knows so many people are going to see it. In the years, the documenter said, she's a personal website with gallery of photos. She spent years caring for her father, Huntington, who had become addicted to drugs, who passed away in 2008. Dude, the people, the four or five people that say, I love essays, please keep reading. This is fun shit. You guys are not only in the minority, but you're like, you're so much worse than the gaming frogs. You're literally like, there's like three of you and you think like everyone else in the 28,000 people that are currently watching are going to enjoy this. Like, just because you fucking enjoy it. Okay, I'm sorry. You're a dork. Okay, go read the essays on your own. Josiah Hornblower. What the fuck? The namesake of the Continental Congress delegate and an heir to Whitney and Vanderbilt families. He founded a biotch company, Pelican, Pelican Ther Therapeutics, and is a co-founder of managing Blue Pine Partners. Jamie Johnson. He launched a now shuttered menswear line in 2010. What the fuck? Launching a line called Black Sweater. SI Newhouse the fourth? What the fuck is this name, bro? He's a marketing manager at Condé Nast. This is the funniest fail, son. This dude is literally a publishing heir, and now all he's been able to do is become a marketing manager, dude. I love that. Ivanka Trump, we already know. Benjamin Luke Will. He also sued Jamie Johnson. Wow. Speculated status is born in the Scientific Games uh, Corporation CEO. A. Lorne Vale was the only thing keeping him in Brown University, despite his subpar grades and attendance. A judge ultimately ruled in Johnson's favor. A few years after the documentary came out, he ran into trouble with the law. He was arrested on charges of beating his girlfriend and an acquaintance. Shocking. He founded a South America focused investment firm called Andina Acquisition Corporation and spends his time launching ventures near the Amazon. Oh my God. Kaiser Wilhelm II. What the fuck? Oh, this guy is literally fucking royal blood, dude. But the air reported that was displeased with how the documentary portrayed him. Uh, he went to work at Morgan Stanley and launched a Soho art gallery. Bro, look at him. He's got the genetic disease, bro. That's how you know. Bro, when motherfuckers have like ha Habsburg jaw, that's how you know homies are fucking royal royal. They're rich, rich, dude. You know what I'm saying? I'm the German Baron and uh, Italian Viscount. In all, 10 of Jamie's friends agreed to bear their wealthy souls. I'm a handbag guru, personally, because it's like the easiest thing to shop for when you're not really shopping and you're just running in. And you just go and you buy it and you don't realize how expensive it is. Cy Newhouse IV is the eldest son and heir to a publishing empire. It's the Condé Nast Group, which includes Vogue, Allure, Vanity Fair, GQ, Self, Glamour, House and Garden, Condé Nast Traveler, Architectural Digest, Bon Appetit, Gourmet, Wired, New Yorker, and I'm sure there's a couple I missed. No, Cody Franchetti oh, yeah, is piece. heir to a textile fortune. Lapels, you see they're high. There's nothing worse when you see these jackets with these lapels that go like this. You see? They are low riding. Clinton wears this kind of thing. Have you seen? It looks like a restaurant owner. It's so vulgar. This is so, has an aristocratic thing to it, no? Cody is a part-time model and a full-time multimillionaire.
who feels not one shred of guilt over having wealth he's never worked for. And I, and I find guilt uh, absolutely senseless. So I don't, I don't, uh, I don't feel bad for any, for any thing, and uh, especially having money. I find it a very, very negative trip, and it's something that is, you know, uh, basically for, for uh, old women and nuns. While all the people in Born Rich never need work, Jamie's father never has worked. Not one day, not ever. Instead, he paints. I don't want to be nervous about money or be nervous about who I am. And I feel like you're feeling nervous about this film is maybe that nervousness of who you are. And you're in control of this film, and I'm not. So there's uh, a little source of nervousness talking about money and about having a public association with wealth was a frightening, a frightening thing for him. And the way he's dealt with that is by avoiding it as much as possible. So when his son decides to pull out a I'll camera, of good what's worse, Thanks. and discuss it, hassle, that was hassle. his worst nightmare. I think it was his worst nightmare. But at the same time, I think also that's probably one of the reasons why I felt like it needed to be done, because it's not that frightening money is a thing that you don't talk about i'm confused was he trying to do this to shine a light on like the way that fucking rich people live and like show how gross uh and and abundant uh yet somehow devoid of any real happiness their lives were or was he showing this oh to God, be like oh look house. rich people are just bad. like us and and to like normalize their uh existence He's trying to normalize them. Yeah, Lamau, this is the difference between old money and new money. Everyone's mad at Bezos and Elon, but never these people because they know how to be quiet. Yup. And even their fucking children, dude. Yes, when you're nouveau riche, when you're nouveau riche, you don't know how to fucking, uh, you don't know how to shut the fuck up. You're constantly spotlight. Getting fucking, uh, getting yelled at, understandably, by the way. Okay. But when you're old money like these homies and you're like, you know, you're a recipient of like eight generations of fucking billions, you know, you're not going to, you're never going to be in the media. You're never going to be in, in front of the uh, cameras. You're just going to, you know, quietly be a philanthropist. You are a part of new money. Bro, my money is literally not even a thing in comparison to this. Okay? This is like unimaginable. We're talking like world changers, motherfucker. How are you... How are you still this naive to say like, oh, dude, you're part of new money. I have like fucking Hollywood actor money. Okay. I am still rich. Of course. Yes, I am. I, I am. Now I am for sure. We're talking like you're so fucking wealthy that your son, your son's son inherits a billion. Okay. Like that's, you're, you're a psychopath if you think, and it's more importantly than that, it's how they make their money and what they do with their money and power. Okay. Like we're talking about people who are like playing fucking, you know, they're, they're playing games with entire nations. They're, they're, they got like continent destroying. You got like small time Hollywood actor money. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're talking about people that are, you know, destroying entire continents to fucking rip the natural resources. These people are gods. Because it's in bad taste. Why? It was to his father that Jamie turned to seek his advice about a burning question. Even if you don't need to work, does it fulfill you more as a person to have a job? It's a concept his dad finds difficult to grasp. After graduation, you might pursue the filming. I love that you stream eight hours a day and these haters bitch and barely work five hour shifts. No doubt you're fortunate, but goddamn, it's not like you were born into it. You can't buy a country. These people can snap their fingers and genocide a race. Yeah, I mean, I make, if I stopped working, these people can stop working and still add billions onto their fucking wealth. If I stop working, then at some point, people are no longer going to subscribe. And th when those subscriptions fucking run out, I have no more extra money. Now, could I make my current amount of money work for me and leave, uh, live most likely a modest and, and comfortable life? 
especially if I make correct decisions in the, in the stock market? Certainly, that is a reality. But I don't want to do that. I want to fucking, I want to work. I want to make money off of my work, which is why I still, um, you know, I love what I do. And that's part of the reason why I still do it. See, you guys always say, you guys always say simp chatter. Uh, like whenever someone says something correct and nice, that's part of the reason why chat is also reinforcing that I never read positive chat. Chatter's comparing Twitch Primes to a fucking Baron. Yeah, I know. Like, a little bit, but you might also get interested in graduate school, further studies, building a collection of historic documents, papers, publications. As a career? Yes. Okay. And you look at him as if to say... Chatter thinks people here work five hours a day. That's what people are mad at. Shut up, Secretary of Antifa. There's people that work zero hours a day in here. We're in fucking Twitch chat, okay? There's plenty of fucking neats in here too, okay? Stop acting like every single person is a stevedore. Like every single person. No, not a single motherfucker who's like a union employee... Or even a non-union employee that works their fucking asses off is going to come in here and be like, you're fucking rich, you piece of shit. They don't give a shit. They understand that I'm on their fucking side. 90% of the time, the fucking people that are like, uh -huh, you're rich too, are literally sitting in their fucking mommy's McMansion basement, eating chicken tendies, never worked a fucking goddamn second of their lives, crying, or, you know, crusty ass anarchists. So don't act like, you know, don't act like fucking, uh, it's actually the forklift certified Andes that are like, I can't believe Hassan is so rich and like talking about other rich people. It's always the same annoying neoliberal neats that literally do not fucking work are from rich families that come in here to be like, I'm going to fucking own you. Because if you're actually working class, you recognize that like, I myself am not that far removed from like fucking being working class. And also not only that, still advocate for working class values and uh, the best interest of the working class and do everything I can to ensure that like I abide by the principles that I espouse, okay? You know, that's the difference. Something seriously wrong here. I do remember <laughs> that. And it's kind of funny because he su suggests I collect old maps and there's something so antiquated about that idea. Hand colored? Yeah, oh yeah. Well, considering I don't have to work, what advice would you give me on? <laughs> <laughs> then don't work. <laughs> then don't work. Why would anybody in their right mind work unless they had to? Do you have a job? Ah! No. Do you want a job? No. Cody Franchetti's chiseled face looms large over New York. But right now, he has put modeling on hold. In fact, this 29-year-old says he's put off any career until he's 40. It's a decision he's happy with, but not so many of his mates. I have met more very rich people. I think he is hot, and I think that's inappropriate, okay? If you're going to be, like, the son of a fucking baron and, like, born into billions, you can't also be hot on top of that. I find that to be completely and categorically unacceptable. People that are unhappy than regular people that aren't. And this is, I just cannot understand why people think that- Everyone uh, make sure to donate to Hasanami today so we can afford health insurance. What? Oh, this is one of those fucking weirdos, dude. It, what do you mean? Voiceover guy was like, finally some base shit I get to sell. What the fuck are you, what the fuck do you mean? Everyone donate to some- Rittenhouse is about to have a bigger mansion than Hasanabi. Plot twist, the prosecutor secretly conservative Rittenhouse fanboy. Successfully through the nine-month brain rot phase and not banned. Just well, like, I don't know why I keep these motherfuckers in here. Just like, get the fuck out of here. Uh, money equal. Dumbass. Yeah, MySpace profile pic. Dumbass, dude. You're too old to be in this chat. Get the fuck out of here. It isn't so. And, and often it equals unhappiness at a certain level. What, what would make a very rich Isolation. person unhappy? Isolation is one of the main things that comes with, with wealth, with extreme wealth. And that is a terrible thing. This was my bed. It's all small for me now. <laughs> and then Probably there's Ivanka it, Trump, but, yeah. blessed with beautiful looks. Ivanka is hot, let's be real. Looks and buckets of money. 
The fact is that I'm absolutely okay. Maybe you know, I spoke too soon, but like she is still attracted. This daughter of Donald never feels lonely, but she says she understands the oh so terrible isolation money can bring. I remember once I was on a job in Australia, and um, and this guy just walks up to me who I'd never met. And I joined a little late, but if the dad made his money through making art, I really don't see a problem with his wealth since there's no exploitation. You are literally watching a recipient of the Johnson and Johnson uh, family. Like, that's a Johnson, dude. He didn't make his money via his art. <laughs> mobile chatters. Well, not mobile chatters. Like, I came in late. But this guy, he's the J in Johnson, dude. <laughs> says how does what does it feel like to be wealthy and i was like and i was like excuse me and he goes what does it feel like to never have felt any pain and that really upset me just the fact that there really are people out there who think like that you know that think that with money comes comes happiness i think this is so classic and it's what of love bag. you stick everything in it can hold Makeup kit, it can hold. For finance heiress pilot, Stephanie Oaklands, the, the options are limited. Um, Poor people. I really want to watch this documentary because we're going to see a bunch of fucking really fucked up uh, neurotic kids born with silver spoons in their mouths try to fucking reason with the reality that like they never have to work a day in their goddamn lives and also on top of that uh, are deeply unhappy about their existence and uh and and we'll never know the value and the 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 beautiful thing that is like uh, doing something fulfilling for yourself that you yourself have accomplished and so they just fucking drown themselves in material possessions uh in an effort to uh, forget about how sad and pathetic their existence is and that ultimately is the funniest thing whenever people try to compare that to me because, like, they'll say, oh, yeah, you have a fucking mansion, yeah, but, but, like, dude, it's like, I do this. This is what I do. This is what gives me fulfillment, okay? Yeah, immediately, nice house. It's so stupid. Dude, you are so dumb. I literally still, look at my background, dude. Look at this. Nice house. Motherfucker, I haven't done shit in this house, okay? You know why I haven't done shit in this house? Because I stream eight hours a day, okay? I just want to stream. That's what makes me happy. You're generalizing like crazy to defend how rich you are? Absolutely. I see that this is going to be a really fucking annoying experience. So instead of fucking addressing all the idiotic uh, uh, baboons in the chat, I'm just going to start banning them without addressing them. This is actually pretty good. This will be a good... Maybe you'd like... Bruh, eight hours is a normal job. Your fucking cables coming out of your walls on Instagram? Okay, chill. We're that's gonna be fixed eventually. Does it really make you happy though? You always talk about how unhappy you are when you stream. No, only recently uh, have I been feeling unhappy when I stream because of the influx of like shitters. Cool. Need not apply. So you can fit your little dog in it. I've never actually dated outside my social background, and I've thought about that. Never. It's really weird. And potential partners beware. With love comes lawyers. One day I'll fall in love and I'll get married, whatever. I'll probably get divorced a couple of years later. I'll have a serious so prenup before I... Uh, argue with people about being rich now? Prenup. You don't have to address every in my head. Bro. Since I was five years old, prenup. <laughs> All the way. And if this little ungrateful bitch has the nerve to say something like it's un... Wait, this guy beat his girlfriend and someone else? That's crazy. You mean to tell me this guy actually got a fucking... He caught a domestic abuse charge? That's so strange, Romantic, dude. I don't want her prenup. Then she's just a gold digger and I don't want to get married to her anyways. Okay, we're watching the well, fuck out of this doc, you dude. By some of the things that were said. In times, I, I was really surprised. I mean, I was surprised and offended and confused and just thought, is it, is it really this way? I mean, is this really the state of things? Can you recall when or what would make you surprised or offended or mildly amused? There's certain moments in the film 
when you see such a strong sense of entitlement and such a snobbery and I think those are hard to watch. You being here for us every day. This is the elaborate doing eight hours, but you can eat whenever you want, shit whenever you want, just shitting and talking, that's nothing. Oh wait, what am I doing? I'm reading comments. I'm reading comments. Oh god, I'm sorry. Sonica, 11th edition, which is uh, in 33 volumes, but thin. Over and, the year, uh, baby, you and this is the last oh edition that was written myself. before it became from 1911, before it got completely rewritten and became, you know, for the masses. I mean, now the Encyclopedia Britannica is, you know, it's shit. Born Rich nearly died before it was finished. During the production, Luke Wheel took legal action to try and stop it going to air in America. Luke failed, and Jamie's expose of Young Money finally made it to air. There was a huge sense of fear that built around the movie because press started to come out before anyone had seen it, before the subjects in the film had seen it. And I think their family started to react to the press and their friends started to react to the press and saying to the kids that were in the film, you're an idiot, why did you do this? This was so stupid. And then they got scared. In the end, Jamie's aim was a very personal one, to lift the veil of secrecy so that he could feel comfortable with his own mega wealth. But these rich frogs in the documentary have melee appliances. I do too, baby. Let's go. We are the same. So, how successful was he? How much money did you inherit? You know, it's interesting. I, it's, I'm a millionaire. I'm a multimillionaire. But I don't really talk about it more specifically than that. Why not? And there it is. It's like, you know, I've made this film and I, I'm comfortable now talking about wealth in public. But, uh... I still don't go there. Because I won't be upset. Yeah, I know, <laughs> you know. I won't view you any differently. <laughs> it, it, so to this day, you still can't say, well, actually, I've got, you know, 400 million in the bank or I can have access to a, a billion dollars if I want. You can't utter those kinds of words? I can't. I've had the benefit of being rich all my life and I'll never want for material things. But after working on this movie, I've discovered that what you inherit may not be as valuable as what you earn. That ultimately is the fucking uh, reality, okay? That ultimately is the reality, which is that like, obviously having material possessions and, and having everything fucking taken care of is significantly better overall, is significantly better overall than like being born to a fucking poor family and suffering your entire goddamn life to make ends meet because being poor is incredibly hard or rather it's incredibly expensive to be poor rather but yeah they at least you can uh grow happy in this chat in this community if you fucking uh you know sit around and you're like well fuck these people look at their possessions like look at all the shit that they have they're all they're they're all very sad and trying to mask that 16, real sadness that they have with material possessions and, and that is because they will never understand fulfillment. They will never feel a day. Do you think these people ever have, ever have sympathy for the pain their families have caused? I don't understand how people, especially with textile wealth, aren't constantly thinking about it. Yeah. They're sad, Copium? No, they 100% are sad. And they will never be able to... I mean, but the difference is you're sad too. You're just sad and poor. At least they're sad and rich, okay? <laughs> that's the difference motherfucker okay you're you're crying in your honda civic after a fucking long shift and your manager's like i'm not letting you take a fucking uh you know uh, take the day off for your birthday or whatever they're sad and they're crying in the fucking lamborghini that's the difference so yes everyone would rather be sad and rich than be sad and poor the real lesson is that there's no real reason for these people to be so rich when it doesn't even make them happy yeah 